to the Jeremy Hill show. If you're easy to trigger, leave now because this is not the show for you. Now, this is another reaction video. And what I'm going to do with this reaction video is, pay you, is play you a few clips because there's an issue in America where they think that black men are deadbeat dads. Well, I'm going to play some clips defending the men and debunking that myth. So this is for educational purposes. And I'm using these clips out of fair use so that you can pass their own judgment. So let's go ahead and get started. They want to sit around and talk about these black men ain't nothing. These black men ain't that. But they ain't shit. Because in the last 30 years to 35 years, black men ain't even been in the house to raise them. So how y'all going to talk about these young black boys ain't nothing when you sorry bitches who won't raise them the last 30 years? So if they ain't shit, you the motherfucking one raising where they ain't shit. So how you gonna talk about a man? You hold the one throwed us out for welfare to get in a- Facts, this is true. A lot of women are, they have incentives to not have the man in the house because the government will take care of them. The government will give them food. The government will give them shelter. And in some cases, the government will provide protection. So they totally remove the man because it is the man who bring all three of those things that I've just mentioned to the family, to the woman, to the children. But by giving women who are materialistic, selfish and self-centered this way out, when they gave them this incentive to abandon the traditional structure of a family, they took to it. And they stuck with it. And the women who complain about men not being good men are always the women who don't want men. The women who always complain about how bad men are are the women who are bad themselves. These are the women who run the streets. These are the women who don't really want to hold down a job. This is the woman who wants to smoke, drink, sniff drugs, and do all types of harsh things and be bad examples to their children, these are the ones who want to point out the flaws and the faults of men. Simply because they are still immature. They believe that someone should come through and take care of them while they put forth minimum to no effort at all in a relationship. So they put the men out. Let's continue. Hey, shit. So how you gonna talk about a man? You hold the one throwed us out for welfare to get an apartment free or to get benefits. Study y'all want to sit at home and listen at the black man work with a black man with partnership. The shit ain't over. Y'all making it over. The black man, we we, we participate in our children. Uh, PTA me, or uh, school, we do still the same shit. But these hoes don't want us in the house. They want to kick us out because they want to go trick with this nigga and that nigga and then put us down talking about we don't love our kids and all that. I love my kid. And and one of these hoes say I don't love my kid. Go to and one of my three baby mama and ask me if I'm a deadbeat dad. Cause I'm a I'm going to tell you something. It's true. These women want to live the most basic, dirtiest lives in the projects, in the ghetto, just so they can have some type of illusion that they are doing it big, that they are boss divas. It's cool and it's a man, it's amazing for them. Now it's, it's easy to be a boss diva when you're on government assistance and you only have to pay $25 a month for your apartment or wherever you're residing at. So that doesn't really make you a boss, but in their mind, yeah, that's what makes them a boss. What they want is government assistance and child support. They want those type of streams of income to keep them living this type of lifestyle. I'm going to play another clip for you, gentlemen. Of a woman who is saying the same thing that I am saying to you. One second as I pull it up. Here we go. We create welfare. We were handed it. But welfare gave us all that we needed to say fuck. And then we wonder why we have to return our children to their fathers, which is the prison system, because the government is your baby daddy. Now give us our son. We fed him through food stamps. We housed them through HUD and Section 8. We the baby daddy. Give us our child. And 
Exactly. Once again, the government replaces the man of any color, of any race, of any ethnic group. The government will get in there. Now, this only works on women who are lazy. Again, slothful, lazy women want the government to help them out. Now, I'm not talking about people who sincerely need help from the government. But as you and I know, audience, the majority of people who are on welfare, Section 8, HUD housing, food stamps, yada, 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 are just simply people who are lazy, people who do not want to work. And the majority of the times, in my most humble opinion, is more women doing that than the, than the men. We have pookies, yes, but you meet more women when you're out and about who are on HUD, government assistance, who are lazy, who can barely hold down a job. If they do, they keep it for a short amount of time and they quit or someone said something they didn't like, they leave it alone. This is the type of woman that you see on that stuff. And we, they get to the point where they come collect and now we look and it's a pandemic and it's an epidemic of melanated men in the prison system. Going back to their daddy, Uncle, Uncle Sam, who raised them via food stamps and welfare and section eight and if we don't do something about it we'll just continue to perpetuate the cycle and i don't talk about what i don't know about because shit i got jammed up because after my life changed i didn't want to let the motherfucking system go when i didn't need it anymore and i got fucked up behind keeping an apartment keeping a section eight apartment thinking to myself, if I was ever to be homeless again, me and my baby's going to always have somewhere to go. See, this is that mindset that women have, that the scarcity and fear, always afraid of what possibly could happen to them. Whatever negative, whatever negative, they are scared of it. And one thing about being on Section 8, HUDs, food stamps, uh, getting EBT, it puts you in a comfort zone. And it makes you not want to leave that because you've been giving everything. You don't want to go work for it. You don't want to try to work with a man and be compliant and submissive to a man and try to work along with a good man. I'm talking about a decent man. You don't want to do that because you're now independent. You're not independent when you're dependent upon the government, but the government gives you this false illusion, this false sense that you are being independent simply because you are now separated from a man. You're only independent if you can get it yourself. Not when you have to sit back and beg for a handout from the government. Do you understand? So they trick you. And the women who do this the most are the ones who poison the minds of other young women and tell them this is the correct route to go. Girl, you don't need a man. Girl, you shouldn't be one. Be a boss. Go this way. The government can give you this. The government can give you that. You don't need no man. And these are the same women who always sleep with random men who don't need men. Make it make sense to me. And the motherfucker reported me to welfare. Got I got real fucked up behind that shit. I don't talk about what I don't know about, baby. Single mama. Uh, she's gonna go on going on about single mother stuff, but hey, another one from the CDC. The CDC debunked. The whole myth that black men are terrible fathers. And I'm going to play that for you. Let's get started. Light speeds. With racial tension at an extreme high in America right now, it's always refreshing to see a stereotype get completely debunked. In a study conducted by the Center for Disease Control, the myth that black men are absent fathers was dispelled. When news outlets report on black fatherhood, it's often depicted as a crisis, further reinforcing the idea that black men are not there to raise their children. But the data that the CDC gathered paints quite a different picture. In the study built upon years of research, the results indicated that black dads are actually more involved with their kids on a daily basis than other racial groups. From changing diapers to playing with their children to helping with homework. I want to say this right here. That lady said that black men are more involved with their children than any other group of anyone of any other racial demographic. Black men are more involved with their children. 
the women, <coughs> excuse me, the women, you know, I'm sorry, you know where this comes from, this myth about black men being sorry and don't want to raise their children? It comes from deadbeat women. Men are not running around talking about how men are not good fathers. And women who have men that they are married to, they're not saying that. The ones who normally say that and perpetuate that and keep talking about that are single mothers. Baby mamas who normally have more than one child, who have more than one biological father to those children. If you look at it, you don't hear about it except from negative women. Negative women are the enemy. Our own women have become adversarial to us. They put us down. They bash us. They lie on us. Even when the numbers tell you that we are more involved in our children's lives, they will still tell you that black men ain't shh. It's sad. Let's play it. Racial groups. From changing diapers to playing with their children to helping with homework, black fathers were statistically more hands-on than white and Latino fathers. Tara Culp Ressler of Think Progress noted that, Equal numbers of black dads and white dads tend to agree that it's important to be a father who provides emotional support, discipline, and moral guidance. There's one area of divergence in the way the two groups approach their parental responsibilities. Black dads are even more likely to think it's important to financially provide for their children. The study also compared dads that were living with their kids and those who were not, and black fathers were still significantly more present. So for those arguing that the turmoil occurring in places such as Ferguson, Baltimore, and black communities across America is a result of absent and effectual fathers, I'm talking to you, Rand Paul. Maybe it's time people stop pointing all the blame at underprivileged parents who are just doing their best to raise their children and take an honest inventory of what's really holding these communities back. So in other words, stop lying on us. Stop lying on black men. Stop trying to make us look like we the boogeyman. Stop trying to make it seem like we don't want to, we just want to have babies and leave them. It's the men that you choose that's doing that. That is only a, a small percentage of men who does that. And a lot of times men who want to be with their children, you got these hard headed, stubborn women who make it difficult for these men to be with their children because they're mad because their exes have moved on and they make it difficult for them to see their own children or they make it where they can't see their children if they don't, if they do not first do X, Y, and Z, or if they stop doing X, Y, and Z to see their own flesh and blood. So stop it. Stop saying that we are horrible fathers. When the numbers say that we are great, and when, when the numbers say, when the facts there and the statistics say that when it comes to fatherhood, the black man, outdoes every other man of any other race in America. And this is not bashing anyone of another culture or, or another community or race. I'm talking about the black right now because I'm black. So stop lying on us, stop destroying our image and stop making us look like fools and making us look like deadbeats and everything we do has to be related to basketball, rap music, or prison. Because it's not true. But well, anyway, see y'all later.